right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from all the way over on the other coast from Gabe Lulo, who is in New York. How are you doing, Gabe? I'm doing good, John. How's the weather over there in San Diego? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. We've had a, actually a pretty bad year, but nobody wants to hear about that because nobody ever wants <laughs> to hear you complaining about the weather in San Diego. So <laughs> Exactly, yeah. yeah. But as I always say to them, like, you know, I mean, I spent the first 30 plus years of my life, like grew up in Ireland. So, you know, I've, uh, yeah. I've, had, I've, I've had enough rain. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. Um, and so Gabe is exper expertise in the sales, marketing, recruitment and management. Uh, owned and operated his own sales training and marketing uh, firm for more than a decade, excels at sales training and uh, now it's successful, now had a successful career in executive recruiting and he has been instrumental in expanding this company's search and placement for IT software sales, customer success, marketing and executive leaders at, uh, at Alleyoop. And for many years, you've been uh, working to build and grow the company, focusing on culture, environment, customer success, and sales. And what we're going to talk to do today about is is sales and recruiting. So, um, Gabe, one one thing I have never heard this said by anybody in my whole career, and that is, wow, it's really easy to hire salespeople. <laughs> it's really easy to find good salespeople, really easy to hire uh, good salespeople. Never heard that. I hear the opposite all the time. Um, so why is why is it that recruiting salespeople is just so, so difficult or appears to be? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, right now our company focuses on, you know, the front end of the sales cycle. So we're a sales development agency. So I think it's actually even harder. A lot of people say, oh, it's easier to hire more entry level salespeople because you know they're they're newer. It's maybe less you know expensive, and it's actually not true. Uh, it, it's it's actually harder to hire even beginning salespeople uh, because you don't have a lot to go off of. And I mean, sales. There's so many variables. There's so many nuances uh, to you know who you're selling to, what you're selling, and uh, you know we live in a space right now where you, there's more technology supporting and driving sales organization and sales team. So that's even another you know, beast to unpack, which is how technical they are. Yeah. So to find all of that out in an interview process is more and more challenging. Uh, and there's even more uh, open spots right now. So even the, the candidate pool is less and less. You see like hundreds, if not thousands of people right now applying to each job. It's it's even more challenging. You think, oh, I have all these better applicants because, you know, it's better to mm -hmm. have more applicants. Well, it's it's actually hard <laughs> to find the right one in the, in a bigger stock a stack right so that's that's even more challenging yeah yeah no I, I, absolutely and and you mentioned the entry level there uh, one yeah. of the other things that you have to fight against obviously is this perception of sales in general uh, where you know people feel like they default into the career as opposed to choosing it and I think we do a very right. poor job of demonstrating and articulating what a great job it really is rather than i mean you know the thing is like loads of people go to college and they do marketing degrees and then they get out of college and they realize oh there's not that many marketing jobs and they go oh well i'll take a sales job to get into it and before you know it they feel stuck so getting over that thing and that perception of sales especially for new people coming into the industry is, is critical yeah absolutely i mean right now i think a lot of people when you say hey what do you do for a living oh i'm in sales Oh really? You know what's next for you, right? <laughs> like what, what's after that? You know, oh, a nice stepping stone. What, what's what's next? And it's like, oh no, I'm in sales and been doing it for a while and not really looking to leave. You know, and, and if you think about it, you know, all executives, CEOs. You know, I don't, I've never met a CEO that said uh, you had to be bad at sales to be a CEO. It's always the mm -hmm. opposite, right? You have to be really, really good at sales. Usually, that's the number one job uh, CEOs uh, had before that is 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 being you know exceptional in sales. So, yeah, a sales to me is is not a stepping stone. It's not a you know home for a while. Uh, it's it's a lifelong career, and the better you are at it, you can make a ton of money, as we all know. 
Mm -hmm. And and you just mentioned there about the complexity today with all the the technology coming in. And obviously, you know, there's people out there going, oh, look, AI is going to replace salespeople and all that, which is nonsense. You know? right. uh, because I think uh, the, the relationship building part of sales is not just has not always just been critical. It's, it's cr more critical than ever now. But tell me about that whole technology part, because that can be intimidating. Well, yeah, I mean, I think you brought up the AI thing, which I, I'd love mm -hmm. to talk about too. But yeah. I mean, we heard about that, what, a decade ago when Marketo came out. Mm -hmm. And I remember when like Marketo came out, marketing automation, like all SDRs, all E's are going to be out of jobs because everyone's just going to get an email and sign up for everything, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, that didn't work. You know, I remember like everyone putting all their dollars and cents into marketing mm -hmm. and, and away from sales when that came out. And then they realized, oh, this is not a replacement. This is just an enhancement of the, of mm -hmm. the position. And now we don't, we don't have any salespeople not sending emails in their cadences and in their, in their um, sales cycle. But at the end of the day, you know, I really think that the complexity with technology is definitely something you need to interview for and test. You know, what we do here is we test skill set and technology. Um, you know, how skilled are they with CRMs? How skilled are they mm -hmm. with you know, managing multiple channels in a sales process? Um, and, and that's really something that you really need to think about. You know, we've hired some great people with great attitudes, great sales careers, but I put them in a remote sales environment with a lot of yeah. tech around them and they just deer in the headlights. And it's, it's a lot of training that you have to go through to get them to a level uh, that they need to be so technology skill set is something that we all should be thinking about in our interview process no i think that's a i think that's a, an incredibly important point and i think then the onus is on you to really look at as you said like what is the what is the situation of the salesperson like? Are they going to be somebody who's going to be knocking on doors, calling, doing all that glad handing, or are they right. going to be doing most of it remotely or whatever? And and it's and you're right. If they're going to be doing it mostly remotely or whatever, there's a whole skill set now that they need to learn and retraining on for some of the more traditional salespeople. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, it, it's not just about being able to be good on the phone. Uh, you mm -hmm. have to really be good at LinkedIn. You have to be good at personalization. You have to be creating brands. You have to be able to fill your pipeline as well as report on it through your CRM and your and forecasting and all of those. There's a lot of tools. Uh, we were taking, we we're actually adding it up the other day at our company. There's like 10 plus different tools and applications from standard email all the way to creating a personalized video that you want to send to a prospect, you mm -hmm. know, in the middle of the sales cycle. Like, all of those different tools, I think there's 10 different applications or more that salespeople should be relying on uh, to, to, to manage their, their sales pipeline throughout the day. And then how do you how do you establish our, our, the balance then? Because, you know, technology is great and it's great to have all these, uh, but some people can get caught up in the technology as opposed to the outcome of leveraging yeah, it. Um, so how do you how do you help keep your folks uh, uh, higher and keep your folks focused on that technology is an enabler for an outcome? It's not an end in itself. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should or doesn't mean you have a plan. Right. I think we have to go back to basics and focus mm -hmm. on, you know, metrics. You know, you have to be making sure that those different tools and technology pieces that you're using has a expectation next to it, uh, uh, you know, whether it's a result or an activity expectation, and then you categorize what expectations are important to get the most amount of results. So if you're selling to salespeople, you know, they pick up the phone more so than an IT person does. Mm -hmm. yep. So I would be using technologies that revolve around phones and being able to make a lot of calls if I was, if that was my, you know, ideal customer profile. Mm -hmm. And if it wasn't, and I was going after IT people, I'd be looking at different tools and technologies to try to connect with them. So I think though, just putting a metric next to it, so your salespeople know they're doing a good job, know what they need to be focused on and know whether or not uh, they should be uh, not focused on it. Yeah. And, and one of the things is we have, uh, I think somebody said we have about five generations in the work, we have more generations in the workforce than ever before. Uh, yeah. I think it, the number is five or something, which is incredible. And right. and obviously they have different, yeah, each generation has a slightly different approach and nuances. So how do you, when you're, when you're looking to recruit, especially for those younger people now coming in very tech savvy and all of that, but how do you, how do you make sure you're getting the right person who also has the ability to relationship build? 
Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we're still in the world in our business where phone is still king mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to have articulate, strong conversations that are meaningful are really still very much uh, where we want our salespeople mm -hmm. to be. So we take them through various role play sessions. We take them through opportunities where they can record themselves and we give them a list of questions that they are asked. And I want to hear exactly how their tonality is, what, mm -hmm. uh, what way they communicate and how they communicate and articulate that message. And that's how we are grading our, our candidates throughout the pipeline. Mm -hmm. um, not, not as much as maybe email personalization or LinkedIn, even though those are both very important channels, but really how they're able to communicate on the phone is, is what we want to see and hear and how we actually grade people in the interview process. Yeah. And, and like I said, that's interesting because I mean, some of the, you know, the, the, the kids coming through now, um, you know, don't yeah. talk on the phone very often. <laughs> and also you're going to have to exactly. teach, you're going to have to teach them how to do that. No, hundred percent. And we do provide a lot of training and support to get them better. Um, and mm -hmm. it is again, to point why it's so much more difficult is people who are coming into the role who are younger, um, you know, they're texting all day long. Right. And, mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're, uh, more maybe making videos or gaming. And, and those are hobbies that young people usually have these days when it comes to mm -hmm. connecting with them. But it, it is something that we have to train them on. Of course, putting a, a training program together is important. But also, you know, finding those individuals, those diamonds in the rough who can get on a phone call and and uh, influence people in the right way. Yeah. So what are some of those core elements you're you're looking for um, when you're when you're recruiting for somebody? What are some of the some of the really solid things that you have to check boxes they have to check off in order to even move to the second phase? Yeah. So attitude is everything really, you know. T tonality and attitude and enthusiasm uh, you cannot see on a resume um yeah. those are things you have to get on a video call or zoom call like this to just communicate and see what they can uh, do and bring to the table for those three rings three things so attitude tonality uh you know energy and char uh, charisma are things that we look for in the interview process because you know, all the other things we can check boxes for in the resume process we can do reference mm -hmm. calls we can take a look at results and expertise those are things that we already obviously want to look at, but kind of already know once we go through that process. But once they come to the the meat of the interview process, those are the things we're looking for. Mm -hmm. And when you say attitude, like when you when you see somebody, uh, what is the attitude you're looking for? Yeah, how do you handle under pressure and ha handle in negativity? As we all know, sales, right? You're yep. going to hear the word no a lot more than you hear the word yes. Mm -hmm. So, what is their response to that? I ask them questions like. You know, tell me about a time professionally or personally that you were dealing with a challenge, you were maybe dealing with an angry customer, you were dealing with a negative situation, and what you did specifically to overcome mm -hmm. that. And because we get people from restaurant, hospitality, retail, customer service, sure. those are usually the, the backgrounds career wise, if you will, for an entry level sales role. So those are all great spaces to be in before you get into tech sales. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, they all have situations where you're dealing with customers in some way, shape or form. Usually you want to talk with someone who's customer facing previously, and they probably have dealt with some situations that they can bring up that will give you an understanding of how they deal with uh, negativity or, 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 you know, challenged situations and what they do to respond to that. Yeah. And then how much is, is curiosity uh, a factor too? Because I mean, you, you need to be curious about the business of business. You need to be curious about the business of your your customers and your prospects. And that is something that once upon a time, I think you know, some salespeople were able to get away with not really you know, focusing too much on that, but you've got to nowadays. So how much does intellectual curiosity and the and being interested in business and the business of customers matter? It's significant. I was reading a gentleman's post the other day on LinkedIn, and he is a guru, works with CEOs and executives. And he said that um, he looked at all the master classes, right? You know, all, we all know master yeah. class. You look at all the master classes that deal with business or leadership. And the one theme about every single master class that he was seeing uh, throughout every individual is the CEOs, the executives, the leaders all wanted curiosity to be <clears throat> top of mind in the interview process. And so I think that's super important for me when I look at somebody at the end of the day and, and I'm meeting with them in the interview process. It, their curiousness is super important to uh, have and to figure out if they have it. 
uh, in that process. It's really, really important, especially in sales, because, you know, our job is to determine discovery. Our job is to find out, you know, why someone wants something before we can sell it to them. And we have to understand the pain uh, before we can provide the solution. And so I think curious, <laughs> being <laughs> curious is the only way to be good at that, right? No, no, a hundred percent. And obviously, uh, you know, communication and listening skills, because that's another one that I think that, yeah. um, and I think that's a challenge for a lot of people today. Not, I'm not, this isn't a younger generation. I think this is a cross generation thing where we become extremely bad at listening. We're very easily distracted, right? I mean, we'll, I mean, you've probably seen it yourself. Maybe in a face to face conversation with somebody and their phone dings and they look down and you read it before coming back and you're going, oh, thank you. Thank you right. for that. Um, are you sure that's not more important than what we're talking about? Please knock stuff out. But that whole, the, you know, th that whole part that that needs addressing, too. Yeah, totally. I mean, I was raised by educators, by teachers. So I was always told by my mom to sit in front of the class, right? When I was a kid, but it's, I feel like I'm a teacher every day because I'm on a zoom call internally, externally, and I'm looking at everyone's faces while I'm talking to them. And I can easily see who's paying attention and who isn't. And I ask them, Hey, what do you think on that, Bob? And all of a sudden that, Oh, uh, what? But at the end of the day, so we have something unique in our interview process. So we give someone a script, uh, they have to do training uh, individually and they come to the table. Then we do a role play before they're able to be hired. And one mm -hmm. of the things in that role play is we give them an objection where, hey, I'm not the right person. You got to call my boss. And usually that person's a VP title of who they're calling. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we always do in there is it's a trick, but it's to get their listening skills out. Is you know what? I'm not the V they ask you, oh, are you still the VP of sales? And I would respond, no, I'm not. I actually just got promoted to CRO. I got to update my LinkedIn. And that's my response. And some people just keep moving on with the script. And some mm -hmm. people say, oh, congratulations. That's awesome. You know, congratulations mm -hmm. on that new title. Actually, you're definitely the person we want to talk to. Right. And so right. that little trick really sorts out people from moving them forward in the next step in the interview process because they literally did not listen to what we said or respond to it. So little trick that we do in the interview process to just find out if people are actually paying attention. Yeah, no, I, lo I love that because, uh, yeah, you could easily see somebody so focused on their script and whatever that they blast past what's exactly. said. And I think the other thing, too, is um, is I think with salespeople, too, sometimes they underestimate, especially in B2B sales, that there's two components. There's the there's the company part, like what's driving the business and why, what's driving the individuals to want to make this business decision. And then there's the personal part where every buying decision is made by a human being or a group of human beings, and they also have personal motivations and maybe some reputational risk. Yeah. I mean, understanding obviously the company's needs and obviously what the product can do to provide that company to grow or scale or save time or make more money. But the personal relationship building is so important, you know, picking up on those little signs, you know, picking up, Hey, you're in San Diego. Okay, great. Let's have a conversation mm -hmm. about that. Or, Oh, your, you know, son's basketball game came up in the conversation. Great. Member remembering that, or, you know, it's a birthday coming up, actually sending out a, a thank you card or a birthday card to that prospect or hopefully future customer. Like those little things go a significant way and picking up on those things are that EQ, that emotional quotient that we always discuss and look at in sales. Mm -hmm. uh, that's important. Yeah. So um, I'm just on the final question on that EQ part. I mean, how, how do you, how do you measure for that? Because that's something that I think sometimes it's hard in a, in an interview process to uncover. Yeah. I mean, we like to get personal with people. I mean, right now people are okay with that as long as you're tactful and, and, and in a professional way, of course, but understanding where people come from, understanding their drive and the reason why they're doing something, understanding if they're empathetic um, and what their real true passions are, uh, are mm -hmm. not only important for the interview process, but also to, to motivate them throughout the sales career. You know, we, we reward our reps based on how they want to be rewarded. Meaning like we have, you know, contests every single month and, you know, sometimes the contest is a physical prize. Sometimes it's a monetary mon money and a monetary prize, or thirdly, it, it could be paid time off given for free. Mm -hmm. So understanding what makes people tick by asking those questions and getting that EQ out and then rewarding them or potentially incentivizing them is another way of looking at it. So that's what we do here.
Yeah, and I, and I think that's smart because also, uh, as as you said, it's like people are motivated by different things. And sometimes people make that assumption about salespeople that they're all motivated by one single thing. And, right. and it tends to be a little more nuanced than that. Yeah, I agree. I was watching uh, Gary Vaynerchuk put something up. He's like, it's our job as uh, sales leaders to truly know inside and out what motivates your people individually. You know, just throwing yeah. money against the uh, against a team of people isn't always going to get the job done. And I think so many, you know, new sales leaders try to just do that because maybe that's what motivates them. So finding out what, it, by the way, just ask, hey, what motivates you? Yeah. And if they'll tell you and then put a put something around it so you can uh, hopefully uh, incentivize them in the right way. Yeah. And it might surprise you with what the answer is when you ask them what 100%. motivates you. Yeah. yeah. Well, listen, uh, Gabe, this has been great. All of Gabe's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Gabe, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah. So I run a company. I'm the CEO of a company called Alleyoop.io. Uh, just like our name in the basketball world, we are the ultimate assist. Our focus is to work with all different types of businesses to help them set more qualified demos and appointments on your full cycle sales team's calendar. So we handle the front end of the prospecting for you through phone, LinkedIn, email, various personalization to get, again, more uh, more meetings, more scheduled appointments, more qualified demos in front of your executive sales team. And that's what we do. Excellent. And who doesn't need more of those? So I right. encourage you to go check it out, uh, aliup.io. Uh, aliup As I said, everything will be below this video. All right. Well, listen, thanks again, Gabe. Thank you for watching and listening. I will see you all again very soon. Thank you. Thanks, John. Thanks, everyone.